In this video, I want to focus on how to create a forming tool for sheet metal. So I've created a base sketch. I've just extruded an eighth of an inch. This thickness doesn't matter because I'm just using this plate to sketch the actual forming tool on top of. So here's my forming tool. I did it with a revolve through 90 degrees and then I added a 1 8 fillet. This tool will represent a forming tool. Let's go back to isometric view. That will punch through the sheet metal, leaving this form here and this part would be cut out or torn through the sheet metal. And the punch tool itself would stop when this face hits the sheet metal. So now we want to do a couple of things. When I create a forming tool, I want a sketch that's separate to position it with. So on this face, I'm going to create a sketch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the outside edges of my tool. So I'm going to convert the fillet, this edge, and this edge, let's go back here and I'll say okay. And then I want to add another line. I'll just add a center line. And I'll do it from here forward. And I'll say okay. If I look normal too, that's my sketch. And that's going to be what I use to position the tool into the sheet metal part where I would like this form stamped in it. So I'll exit the sketch and I'm going to name this sketch positioning sketch. So next, I have to tell it I'm creating a forming tool. I'm just going to go back and look isometrically. To tell it I've created a forming tool, I'm going to go to the Sheet Metal tab. And over here, I'm going to select Forming Tool. So the Form Tool Properties window will open up. And it's asking me here, what's the stopping face? Well, when this face here contacts the sheet metal, it should stop. So I've added that. And then it's saying, OK, when this tool punches through the sheet metal, what faces of sheet metal will be removed? And in that case, that's this face. Now I could have also removed this base plate if I want it, then I would have chose the bottom of my feature as the stopping face. And if I want, I could also go on and tell it what point on my form tool is always inserted into my part. For now, I'm not gonna worry about that because we're gonna insert it and we're gonna dimension from one of the points on the sketch we just created. So I'm gonna say, okay, and I've created my farming tool and you'll notice how SolidWorks has color coded it for me. So next I have to save it as a forming tool. To save this as a forming tool, I'm going to come up here, select the drop down menu and select save as. I'm going to name my part long louver. And then I have to tell it the file type. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to scroll up to the top. So as I work my way down here, just below eDrawings, I see Form Tool. So I'm going to select Form Tool. But the other thing is I have to put it in the proper folder for SolidWorks. And as soon as I tell it, it's a Form Tool, SolidWorks takes me into this Design Library folder. So here in the Design Library folder for the proper version of SolidWorks, I'm going to double click on Forming Tools. And this is a louver, so I'll double click on louvers. I've got it named. It's a form tool. I can add a description as I wish and I'm going to save it. So that's now saved in the SolidWorks library as a forming tool. To verify it's been saved in the forming tool library, I'm going to control tab back to my sheet metal part I was working on. And if I come over here to the design library and I expand and go into forming tools, here's my long louver tool I've created. And next we'll look at how to use it.